In this video, we are going to look at microservices interview questions. These questions will help you in cracking the interview. So let's get started. Our first question is, what is monolithic architecture and what are its drawbacks? In monolithic architecture, all features are built in one big application. For example, the e-commerce application on the right hand side has product information, pricing feature, customer review feature, all in one big application. Monolithic application is deployed as a single unit. The deployment of monolithic architecture happens as a single unit. Any changes to one feature requires deployment of a complete application. For example, if a customer review feature requires code changes, then the entire e-commerce application needs to be deployed. Similarly, if product information requires code changes, your entire monolithic application needs to be deployed. Scaling of individual component is very, very difficult. Application becomes bigger and more complex as more features are added to it. Bug in one area of your application might impact other area of your application and can bring down your entire application. So bug in pricing information can bring down your entire monolithic application because this acts as a single entity, single unit. Let's move to our next question, which is what are microservices? This is very important question and here your actual interview starts. Microservice architecture is a collection of services or small projects. On the right hand side, you can see it's a collection of small services, which is product information service, customer review service, pricing information, and user service. Each microservice is built around a business functionality. That means product information is built around one business functionality. Similarly, pricing information is built around pricing functionality, and you can have multiple services built around business functionality. Every individual microservice is deployed independently without impacting other microservices. In this example, customer review microservices can be developed and deployed independently without impacting product information microservices. So this independent deployment make things a lot more easier for the developer as well as for the entire team. You can have a small team owning your microservices. For example, pricing information can be owned by two or three members team. You can have a different team for your product information microservice where they can develop, deploy, and test the product information microservices as a separate anonymous team. Your microservices are highly maintainable and testable, and your microservices can be tested individually. That means if there is some problem with your product information microservice, then you can test this microservice individually without impacting or without bringing down your pricing information microservice. Finally, each microservice can have its own technical stack. For example, product information can be uh, developed in Spring Boot and pricing information can be developed in Python. Your customer review can be entirely developed in Node.js. For example, that means you can have different technology stack for all these microservices. Let's move on to the next question. What is an API gateway? API gateway sits between your client and your microservices. So this is your API gateway in between, in blue. It acts as an entry point to your microservices. So any HTTP call should go through API gateway and then only reach to microservices. API gateway acts as a front door to your microservices and common cross-cutting concerns. Cross-cutting concerns are those where you have to code in all the microservices. For example, authentication. You have to perform authentication mechanism in all the microservices, microservice one, microservice two, and microservice three. Such kind of problems can be handled in your API gateway. There are various cross-cutting concerns like authentication, authorization, rate limiting, and monitoring. So this can be handled in your API gateway. For high availability, you can deploy multiple instances of API gateway behind a load balancer. Sometimes it happens that your API gateway, single instance of API gateway can go down. To avoid this problem, you can have multiple instances of API gateway behind a load balancer, and you can run multiple instances of API gateway and that can make calls to your microservices. This way you can achieve high availability of your API gateway. There are various frameworks that are available for implementing this pattern, which is Zool and Spring Cloud Gateway. Zool is the old one, but Spring Cloud Gateway is the newer one and it's recommended for uh, the upcoming new projects. Let's move on to our next question, which is how microservices communicate with each other. In this example, suppose if microservice one wants to get some data from microservice two. Now this communication can happen over HTTP via internet. And there are various features that are available in your 
Spring Boot project to do such communication. One such feature is your REST template. REST template is a class which is used to make REST calls over HTTP. So either microservice one will implement or use REST template, REST template to call your microservice two and to get the data back. This is a synchronous communication. That means if microservice one calls your microservice two, then until microservice two returns the data, that call will be blocked. And once the data is given back to microservice one, then the microservice one receives the data and resumes the operation from there. So the communication happens through REST template over internet via HTTP. If you answer this, there are high chances of you getting selected. Let's move on to the next question. What is service discovery in microservices? Consider if product info microservice wants to call pricing information microservice, but how will product info microservice know the URL of pricing information microservice. So here we use the concept of service discovery. Well, where during startup, the product information microservice and the pricing information microservice register themselves with a entity called as service discovery. So now service discovery will have the address of product information microservice as well as the pricing information microservice. So using service discovery, you can get the address of another microservice or different microservice. There are two types of service discovery which are available, which is client-side service discovery and server-side service discovery. Eureka is a library provided by Netflix, which can perform service discovery for you. And there is something called as console provided by HashiCorp, which also can do service discovery for you. For service discovery is a thing where you can identify or discover the URL of another microservice. So that's what service discovery is. Let's move on to the next question. How to handle fault tolerance in microservices? Fault tolerance is where your one microservice is down. For example, microservice three is down. Now, when you call microservice one, it calls microservice two and microservice two calls your microservice three. But as we know, microservice three is down. So this failure is cascaded to microservice two and again being cascaded to microservice one. So the effect of microservice two being down is cascaded to microservice one, which is not good. If one portion of your project or application is down, then that, that um, shouldn't be impacted in other portion of your application. So to handle such feature, we have to make our microservices fault tolerant. So how do we make our microservices uh, fault tolerant? There are frameworks like Hystrix. We use Hystrix for circuit breaker and in case if microservice three is down, it will return a default response to microservice two. So if it returns a default response, we get at least some response in microservice two and that response can be written in microservice one. So we are not getting the actual response from the database. We are getting the default response, but we are not getting failures here. And if one part of your application is down, that is not impacting the other part of your application. So this is all tolerance in microservice. Let's move on to our next question. What is Spring Cloud Config Server? Every microservice has configuration defined in its YAML file. Microservice one will have its configuration in YAML file. Similarly, microservice two will have its own configuration file. But if that configuration is hard coded and if you want to change the configuration, in that case, we have to, we have to take down our uh, deployment, change the configuration and deploy the new version of our microservice. So this is this adds this is not the best practice to change the configuration. So in microservices world, there is a concept of Spring Cloud Config Server, which can read configuration from somewhere. For example, Git in our case, we check in our configuration to the Git server, and our Spring Cloud Config Server will read our configuration from there from our Git project. And whenever we change the Git project, Spring Cloud Config can read the latest configuration and hand it over to your microservices or microservices can read it from your Spring Cloud Config Server. So this acts as a entity which uh, will externalize your configuration and that will help our microservices to scale independently or we can change the configuration at runtime while the microservices are running. So Spring Cloud Config Server helps us to externalize configuration in a distributed system. Let's move on to our uh, next topic, next question. What is the database strategy you follow for your microservices? Uh, there are many strategies, for, but for my application, I personally use database per service, where we have one database 
per service. That means our product information service will have database one and our pricing information service will have database two. Here, every microservice will have its own database and product information service is not allowed to call the database two, which belongs to pricing information service. Similarly, database one, pricing information is not allowed to call your database one only the microservice to whom the database belong, only that microservice can call the database. Other microservices cannot call the database directly. They have to use the REST API for making or retrieving data from the microservices. There is a major advantage of this architecture. You can have database one as your MySQL and database two as your Oracle. You can have different types of database for your microservices. So database per service is the strategy that I use personally in my project. You can answer in this way. Let's move on to our next question. How do you monitor your microservices? Monitoring your microservices is one of the important things you could do. And to monitor your microservices, we can use Spring Boot Admin Server. Spring Boot Admin Server provides all the capabilities to monitor your different microservices. What are the prerequisites for enabling this uh, Spring Boot Admin Server? Your product service and your pricing service should have actuator dependency in your pom.xml. That means you have to add your actuator dependency in the pom.xml of product service. Also, you have to add actuator dependency in the pricing uh, microservice. And then you have to enable Spring Boot Admin Server. Spring Boot Admin Server also provides you with the web application UI where you can check the health of your product service as well as your pricing service. So whenever there is a question how to monitor your microservices, you can answer Spring Boot Admin Server. That's all for today's video. We, can, we will have more videos upcoming in this series where we are going to discuss microservices interview questions. We also provide training. For training, you can call us at below number or register using the link given in the description. Thank you.